Hey, and welcome to another Revit video. In this video, we're going to look at walls once again. This is going to be another video in the walls playlist, and I'd recommend you check out all of that before you check out this one because we're going to be, again, building on more information that we talked about on walls. And this and this, this one's a bit different, uh, but it is still walls. So before we get into it, if at any point in this video you happen to learn something or you just maybe like the video, please demolish that like button. It really helps me out quite a lot. I appreciate it if you do that. All right, get into it now. We are still talking about walls, but I want to talk about something that's a little less used. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but I can see where there is a good time and place to use it, and that is stacked walls. So <laughs> the previous videos we talked about were instance properties of walls, all of everything here, type properties of walls, which is everything here, and then the structure or wall assembly, everything like that goes into making up the wall itself, how it all works and what comes together, all the layers and everything. So all of that, assuming you know what we're doing here, which I hope you do, then we're going to look at stacked walls, which is a bit different. In a way, it's kind of easier, and then it's also kind of difficult because of how the nuances of stacked walls work together. So to use a stacked wall, we, ha we have to make a wall. We have a wall here. And I can change this to any other wall type that we're familiar with, even a curtain wall. But then here at the bottom, you'll see by default, there is one type already. And that is, in this case, brick over CMU with metal set, whatever. It doesn't matter. But this is what we're working with. So immediately, we see there's a lot going on here because it's not just one wall that we're looking at. We're looking at what essentially is two. And that's a wall type here at the bottom. And then a wall type here at the top, one that is just CMU, and then one that includes brick. So... The idea is that we have two different walls that are stacked on to each other. Uh, this is, you could see how this immediately might be really helpful because you have multiple things going on. You can organize it all within one wall and you're kind of good to go. And so that's nice. I, I've done it. I've used stacked walls, not everywhere that I have changed the material and all that because that may not be the thing that you want to do. This might, this CMU could be done with a simple wall sweep, things like that. Like, you don't have to make it a separate wall type. I can't tell you exactly the best reason why you'd want to use a stack wall or not, but um, the best place I've seen it used and have used it myself is if you know you have a wall that is used throughout the project that might change periodically that you want to make sure stays static and that you can really place easily all around the building, all around the site, all around your model. And if that's the case, it's pretty simple to go in and edit the wall type, um, whether it's the whole stacked wall or individual walls within that stack wall. So anyways, let's get into this now. Uh, if I click on this, I do have basically most of the similar uh, instance properties that I had with any regular wall before. But when we go to type properties, that's where things change. So <laughs> I have just the structure or the wall assembly to work with. There's nothing else here that I can actually mess with. It's just the structure. And then I only have one uh, particular stack wall in this whole project, this being the default template. So I'm forced to edit the assembly. And so at this point we can see, all right, I see this exterior brick on metal stud and then exterior CMU on metal stud, which is basically what we're seeing here at uh, with the wall that's included already. Okay. and so. This looks familiar. Um, we can see that I can change my offset here. I'm not sure uh, oh, this is going to depend on the particular wall that I'm selected um, because I can change this whether I want this to be this uh, everything based on the wall center line or not. Um, I definitely would keep this more default because this isn't something I've really ever needed to change, uh, but doesn't matter necessarily. Again, the sample height, if I extend this preview, is only going to apply to this preview. It, that's all it's going to apply. So let's, again, look at this offset and see what it's doing. Well, um, it's actually going to change this particular layer that I've, I've selected. And so what these layers are, are the actual different wall types. And so, and again, in the previous video, we looked at the layers within a wall type and building out the wall. Well, this is basically taking that finished wall and now applying it as a layer. So uh, we're kind of, imagine a tree and we're like branching out here except we're kind of going the other way because we're using the whole wall. And so we've got layers within this wall, but now this wall is a layer. And I can toggle between these two. And again, you can see as I, as I change, um, whether it's wall center line, finish, whatever, this, this layer ends up changing. So I, not something I want to necessarily change all the time. And you basically want to pick the way you want to apply it. 
um, whether, whether it's the core phase, center line, whatever, um, and then leave it that way because it's going to start affecting these walls. So let's look at these layers because that's important. Um, actually, first, the, the sample height, 20 feet. Well, if I change this to 5, that preview, again, it's only affecting this preview. So I'm going to keep this 20 just because it makes sense. It's tall enough. It's not really short. Um, so, again, let's look at the types here. And these types are referring to wall types in my project. And the nice thing is that I d if I decide, well, you know, I don't want to use that. I can use any other wall type in my entire project, which is fantastic. Maybe you build another one. Maybe you say, well, I need to replace this with that one. Whatever, you can duplicate one and use another one. Now, the, the thing I don't like about stack walls is that if I decide, well, oh, I need to edit this wall type, I have to come out of all of these dialog windows and go back into that exact wall type before I can even edit it. But the nice thing is, once I edit it, it will be reflected within the stacked walls that it's a part of because, again, it's referencing that same wall. This, this wall is being referenced. Okay, cool. And so what I want to do here is let's go ahead and change some of these. Um, let's go ahead and we'll make one of them generic. So just a generic 12 inch. You can see what happens is it, there's no layers. There's just that one layer. And then maybe we want to change this one to uh, brick on metal stud, which it's, it just changed the size slightly. So if we're working with something generic, maybe we don't know the size, maybe we don't whatever, we don't know what the wall is yet. Um, but we know that we're going to have some sort of material above the brick. Then we need to focus on the alignment, like obviously this isn't exactly right, um, but it might be right. Actually, it appears to be somewhat correct because the cores are aligning. Uh, remember, the cores are everything like structure. What's um, The cores are very important because they're going to take precedent. So in this case, the cores are aligning on the exterior side, which is great because I, I, don't, I only have the core for this generic 12-inch. And then the core for this brick happens to be the stud layer, which is cool. So... Um, the next thing we want to look at is the height. So for one of the walls, in this case, I have a three, it's set to three feet. Now, if I change this to five feet, then obviously it's going to go up. It's going to be five feet and that's going to be static. That's going to stay the same. It's going to stay that way. Uh, regardless of where I place the wall, it's going to, that wall, that layer, that wall will be five feet tall. Now, the thing without, with stack walls is that regardless of however many layers we have here, and I'll add some more in a second, we're going to have to have one that is variable. And it, that's just, that's the case. And that's that's the case because of the way walls want to join and like stick to things. And typically, you're you're not going to want to know, or, or you don't necessarily need to know, the height of every single layer because you can you'll have to have one that's set to variable. So typically, you'd have maybe you have a wainscot, maybe you have uh, some sort of base layer that's a static five feet, static three feet, and then above that, obviously, it's going to meet the roof. It's going to change. It's going to do different things, and that's where we're going to get our variable height. But maybe we decide, well, you know, we're going to make a wall. Maybe this brick wall happens to be underground. Obviously, that makes zero sense. Um, well, we can we can trade this up. We can take this layer, move this up, and now maybe we decide, well, this generic layer is going to be underground. Maybe it's, you know, the grade beam or something, however you want to show that. Maybe in that case, we want this to be a, a static three feet underground. Well, in that case, we select our brick, and have this one be variable height. We're not going to add another one yet. We're going to change this one to variable. And you can see that variable jumps to be within the brick layer. And so now we have, again, the static three feet of that generic 12-inch layer, which, again, maybe we want this, maybe we don't. doesn't matter. So the next thing is maybe for some reason we decide, well, these aren't exactly where we want them to be. Maybe I want the generic 12 inch, the, that exterior wall of that 12 inch to meet the exterior of the brick. And we can do that one of two ways. We can achieve that through offsets. And whether we want to offset this brick wall or the generic wall, it doesn't matter. It's just we have to, it's going to be positive or negative depending on which one you choose. So let's let's take this exterior and then move it back. So maybe that's, it, it looks like it's probably four inches, something close to that. So I can move that back four inches. So we need to go a little more. So maybe that's five. And so you can see, we have to play with this a bit. Six and an eighth, perhaps. And see, I went positive, and it went out. So it's just, it's a matter of how you're going to get this to work. Six and a half inches, make that negative, and we get, we're pretty close. So maybe it's negative seven. You get the idea here. So what we're working with is aligning these together. And, you know, maybe that's the way you want to do it, maybe not. But regardless, you have the, the power to move these in and out 
which is really nice. And it's going to give us the ability to align things differently. And so the thing to you know worry about now is, you know, I have everything aligned and that's, if that's what you want, that's great. But okay. So what I can do here at the end is I can decide to flip this and it's going to literally flip the whole wall, which is great. So the idea here is that you can really put any of these walls where you want horizontally, any of them where you want vertically, because I can start to layer them vertically. And then I can choose to flip them or not. Obviously, the flipping doesn't do a lot for this one in particular because it's generic, but it does end up flipping it on the outside. So things to be aware of. And at this point, we maybe we want more walls. If we have this as a, quote, grade beam or something, then we have brick. And maybe we have brick up to a certain point. Uh, but then we need to add another layer. So I'll insert one. It's going to actually duplicate the one I selected and then add it above. And so maybe I don't want this generic. Maybe I want this uh, CMU. Okay, so we have this giant. So this is obviously not making any sense at all. But uh, for the sake of this video, I'm going to show you how these layer up and what it looks like. And so maybe uh, I decide, well, I want the CMU to be out, you know, three inches, four inches, maybe even the, the full course of six inches. Cool whatever that's fine maybe even up to eight inches cool that's what we want and maybe i know well the cmu is definitely definitely going to be a certain height okay you know if we have eight inch cmu we can go up to 80 inches maybe for 10 blocks and so if we have our 10 blocks there cool then we just have brick the rest of the way up maybe that's the way to do it i don't know but nonetheless <laughs> uh, we might say well now my gray beam isn't necessarily aligned with my the structure of the CMU wall so then I can come in here and say well you know minus three inches is maybe what I need to get uh, maybe it's four inches so that that's pretty good and so essentially what we've done is we've made a wall that is includes a grade beam or something like that and this is not necessarily how I do a grade beam but for the sake of this I'm showing you the different layers so I've got the grade beam and then I've got a CMU layer and then I've got a brick on top of that and so I don't necessarily like the alignments but nonetheless we've made this wall and so we can see that we have our three foot grade beam we've got our six foot eight or ten courses of CMU and then above that we have brick up until a certain point up until the, the roof another wall a floor whatever and so okay I'm pretty happy with this this looks decent enough I guess so you can see what happens here is <laughs> I have all my layers and it's literally presenting itself as one giant wall and that's kind of helpful in a way because that's how a stacked wall, I mean, that's how a stacked wall works. And that's kind of the advantage of a stacked wall. I have all this together. And if I want to place another one, I just, I place it. And I'm working with that entire wall system together, which is cool. So what I want to do now is actually place, I'm going to place a different wall, not the same wall, but maybe just, I want to place that generic 12 inches. And so we can see this, obviously these walls are not the same, but we know that this generic 12 inch wall is within this stacked wall and it's right there. So maybe what I want to do here is I'm just going to do this to show you how it impacts this stacked wall and what you'd have to do if you want to edit this stacked wall. I can come in here and edit the type of this generic and I maybe I come into the structure and I decide, you know, I, I don't want this to be one foot. I want this to be two feet. And not only that, I want to add uh, a layer that's uh, maybe it's behind, and I want this to be earth, you know, and, I, and I'm doing this as a show in section, but maybe I have uh, three or four feet of brick, not brick, earth behind. And so I, maybe I want this to have this be earth, and I can search for earth, there's some earth, and maybe I actually want this to be concrete because that's exactly what it is. And so once I end up placing all of this, we can see that not only does it impact this wall here that is now our generic 12 inches, which is not it, that's not the generic 12 inch anymore. It is the gray beam with the earth in it. Then I can see here, there, there it is. It's been applied to the stacked wall. And so I, this, this looks absolutely dumb and that's perfectly fine. But what I want to do at this point is come in here to section and just show you what it's doing. Not that this is a big deal, but you could see why I might be doing something like this. And this doesn't look good at all. But here, here we go. What, in section, this is basically, we've got our wall. We've got our grade beam below, wherever it is. Again, not necessarily how I do a grade beam, but then I have my, my earth. Not how I do earth, but you could start to see how the different layers of a wall can be put together and then ultimately stacked together. 
And so a nice thing with this, of course, because it, it is a stacked wall, is that I can I'm placing this anywhere and it's gonna it's gonna run around corners, it's gonna join and do everything that I would want it to do on its own. I can flip it all, I can do anything that I would normally do with walls with this stacked wall. And this is the reason I might like it. So uh, thinking off the top of my head where I might use this, um, I've designed a number of pools in the past. And <laughs> the difficult part about pools is that, assuming we're talking about a, like a straight wall within a pool, is that you have a number of layers that go into that. And, you know, it's a plaster layer. Then you've kind of got a tile layer. Then you've got um, probably your coping over the top. And it's you've got all these offsets that might differ uh, depending on the wall itself. So you have all these offsets that are in and out, and then you've got the coping on top, which is always going to be in. And so it would be really nice to have a stacked wall that is the wall of a pool. And it's just one example. You know, maybe you have a particular uh, metal building that you always make. You know, you've have you've got your foundation layer, you've got the same metal wall, or maybe you've got a Wayne's coat of something, then you've got the rest of the metal panel that goes up above that. It, the, there are lots of application. If you're in residential, you've got, probably got brick and then siding or whatever it is. So obviously don't use this everywhere because it could really break some things. But this wall is basically layers of wall. And then you can use that to do whatever walls normally do. I can even curve this. If I come into plan and I decide I want to place this, I can I can make a spline. I can make it curved. I can... I can do absolutely anything, and it's going to perform the same exactly like a wall. It's actually going to look really nice, come together. I, I really like stacked walls, but for very specific things. So that's going to do it for this video. We looked at stacked walls, uh, which is basically just layers of wall. <laughs> uh, and, of course, in the previous video, we looked at those actual layers of walls. So check that out definitely before... Um, Again, if you check that out and reference that video if you need to for stacked walls, because the same applies. Stacked walls are basically the same, but with actual walls as layers. So if you happen to learn something, which I really hope you did, please, please, please demolish that like button because it really helps me out quite a lot. And, and I'll see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day, and thank you for watching.